imaginary world somewhere inside our mind. Some of us can visualize them. Some of us, of course, keep them hidden. And then some of us are artists who can take what's inside and create something to be seen that will give us all a glimpse of the world within. Artist Michael McMillan uses found objects in part to create his many unique worlds. Michael McMillan is not satisfied making art of normal proportions. He creates worlds, many worlds. I wanted to make these large installations. I had no money or space to do them in, so I started making them in a smaller format to kind of realize my ideas. And um, realized after doing that that there was something beyond merely being miniature. There was another dimension there that I was opening up. At first glance, one might assume that this was a very carefully constructed miniature of some actual object. Upon closer examination, you will see that um, I've mixed scale quite freely. Um, as you look, you'll find objects like pencils, um, keys, um, cut up light assemblies from water heaters. It's actually um, an assemblage of, of seemingly unrelated objects that somehow work together to create the impression of, of this building. This piece is called Further, and it was inspired by one of many trips I took out to the um, desert surrounding Los Angeles. I would um, every so often come across these abandoned habitats, these old trailers and things that perhaps prospectors or hermits would live in. The objects that I, I use, I generally find in and around Los Angeles. So a lot of times I'll go for walks or take a bicycle and just go cruising through the alleys. And it's amazing what, what I've found over the years. There's kind of a, I think a bit of alchemy involved with it in, in the idea of being able to take stuff that no one has any interest in and resurrecting it back into an object that has more meaning. Traveling in and around the heart of old Los Angeles was a large inspiration for a number of these works. The old industrial and shipping part near the railroad tracks would yield just a, an endless variety of images. This uh, bronze is called spikehead for obvious reasons. I guess it's an expression of life in the 20th century. You know, the stresses. It might look horrific initially, but it's also the very funny elements to it, too. Again, the more you look, the more you see the irony and the humor layered in amongst the, the seemingly tragedy and pathos of the piece. There's a wonderful magic and mystery to the work. There's a very childlike quality, yet it's beautifully made. There's a wonderful sense of scale and proportion. And the works tend to transport you to another place. I have a lot of ideas and thoughts that, that I deal with in my work. I don't want to lock it down to one specific meaning because each person will bring a different set of memories and expectations to it. It's almost like a story that has an open end. The viewer then completes that story. And what I like about these works is that over time, the story changes. Michael's work I've been collecting since 1974, and I have probably 10 pieces of his work from spread out every couple of years during that period of time. It's always fresh and new. You always are in a given day, you may have 10 different responses to the same piece of work because it is so complex and so open to interpretation and, and personal involvement that you can find a place in it. There's always like, there's the narratives going on throughout the entire piece. There's stories that are building and stories have to do with real life. And I think everybody would look at this piece and see a completely different thing because it involves personal narratives. Where we are now is in one of my installations. Uh, this one is called The Hungry of Rain. What I've done is I've built a pond inside the gallery, and in that pond I've created a mistake kind of shack made out of junk, of found items that I've, I've scavenged from Los Angeles and outlying communities. I've plumbed a rain system that allows rain to fall for 20 minutes twice an hour. As you go into the um, space here, I've also built a chamber that contains a hammock so that the viewer can lay down and, and listen to the sound of the rain as it's falling on the metal roof. It's, uh, it has a very calming uh, effect, at least it does on me, and I, I like spending time in here.
I try to create things or situations that I myself would like to experience on my own. And since no one else is going to do it for me, I have to do it myself. The world of Michael McMillan.